Okay, in this presentation, I'm going to look at how a bond issued at a premium or a discount affects the interest expense that we realize on that bond. And I have it laid out in T-account form here. I've got the asset accounts and the liability accounts shown here on the balance sheet. And then the interest expense that we recognize here is part of net income on the income statement. So looking at our example here, we issued a $100,000 face value of bond. It's a five-year term with 10 semi-annual payments and it has a 9% stated rate of interest. Now when we sold that bond we received $104,100 for that bond and that was based on an 8% a market rate of interest. Now you can see the difference here already. You got the 8% market rate of interest here and you have a 9% um, stated rate of interest here. So what we need is a balancing account between this cash and this bonds payable amount. And what we use here is, in this case, would be a premium to bonds payable. That's a valuation account that increases this bonds payable account. And the balancing entry would be $4,100 here. Now that represents the premium that we received on this bonds payable. And this is really some interest that we received up front on that bond. This premium to bonds payable as it's amortized here reduces the interest expense that we recognize on that bond each period. Now our payments on that bond or would be uh, listed here as a bonds payable amount and they're based on uh, the 9% or 4.5% per period times the face value of the bond and uh, at 4.5% times the $100,000 face value we get a $4,500 payment each pe uh, pay period that we have to pay on that bond to the bondholders. But we only realize an interest expense here, uh, a lesser interest expense, and that is reduced by this premium amount here, this premium amount that we amortize. So this premium and bonds payable is a reduction to our interest expense. And we'll go into it in greater detail here. Okay, let's look at how this premium on bonds payable reduces the interest expense that we recognize on that bond. So we issue a bond here with a $100,000 face value and we receive $104,100 for it in cash. So we receive the premium amount here of $4,100 on issuing that bond. Now we get to keep that premium amount here, but we must pay back the $100,000 face value at maturity, plus we have to uh, pay 10 semi-annual interest payments of $4,500 each on that bond. So this premium on bonds payable is used to calculate our interest expense here, plus it's used to amortize this uh, bond down from $104,100 carrying value when it was issued here to its $100,000 carrying value at its maturity date. So let's look here at our interest expense. This interest expense is calculated based on subtracting this premium on bonds payable from the interest payable uh, on that bond. Now those interest payables are those 10 semi-annual interest payments to our bondholders here. So if we look at this interest expense here, this $40,900 total amount here on the debit balance here in the interest payable that we realized, and add that to the premium on bonds payable here of a debit balance of $40, $4,100, we have a in balance here with the interest payable here of a credit balance of $45,000. So we uh, paid out $45,000 here in interest payments, but we recognized only $40,900 here as interest expense. And that was based on subtracting this premium on bonds payable of $4,100 here from those total amount here of interest payable amount here of $45,000. So this premium on bonds payable here that we received when we issued that bond, that reduces our interest expense through these uh, journal entries here that I showed you.